Hey, Merry Christmas to all you guys that celebrate Christmas. Otherwise, happy December 25th. Uh, and that's Sap, because that's what I do on Christmas. And, well, on the holidays anyway. I try to do something just to keep busy. Keep my mind off the world. Anyway, uh... I've been, you might find this funny, in addition to documentaries and reality shows and, and, uh, and thing, and, you know, I, I usually don't watch movies. I usually watch inform, things where I can learn things, good and bad. Yeah, but I spend a lot of time watching the Food Network. I, I, I do like to cook. I don't have the opportunity anymore, but um, I do like to cook. And you see me make a few pans, and there's a couple, of, a couple of reasons why I like watching the Food Channel. Number one, it's like watching a Viking movie. You know, you get to see your customers using implements that you create, cooking utensils, uh, pans, and, and knives. So I like to I study that, but my purpose is to just take myself into a different world. Um, but they use a, there's a pan that they use an awful lot when they're doing eggs and things, uh, scrambled eggs and stuff. It's like my frying pan, but it's, it's got a curved edge to it. And, um, it's a little higher so that you can throw in a, you know, if you made scrambled eggs, if you throw in a, a pretty good helping and it, it reduces down. And when you're starting around, you're sloshing things around. And somebody asked me, you know, man, I like a pan like that. So that's what we're going to do. I know I've, I've done enough, a lot of frying pan videos. This one we're going to do specifically for a particular type of pan rather than different techniques of making the pans. Uh, and that's what we're after. We're after, uh, you know, I don't know, a 12 inch, 10 inch, 12 inch pan with a good two to three inch curved, not curved like that, but just curved up. So when you're sloshing it around, instead of splashing up and half of it coming out, it might splash in, you know what I mean? Uh, and what the hell, it's Christmas. Let's do something like that. Uh, I did have a 14 inch disc of the uh, 1008 uh, sheet stock cut someplace, but uh, it's gone. And I don't know where I put it after the move and a lot of stuff. Like all my raw materials, they're all still over there, you know. I mean, it's crazy. Uh, I just don't know what the heck to do with them all. <clears throat> so anyway, we're going to start off, we're going to cut off about an 18-inch, a little bigger than an 18-inch disc. Because I do want a decent-sized pan. Like I said, it, it, when you do scrambled eggs, for a family anyway, you end up with a pretty large mixture that you reduce down into the scrambled eggs. So we'll cut that out with a plasma cutter, and then I'm going to use the... Uh, the, the older technique, the bowl technique, where you, you drop the bottom, all right? You, you actually thin the bottom that creates a bowl, and then you flatten this inner part of the bowl. My objective, really, because with anything that sticks like eggs do, um, is to really try not to try to see what I can do about taking out the hammer marks. I really want to do that. Um, the pans I make are awesome, but they're rough, you know? They're, and I've seen hand forged pans like on Etsy and stuff and they're perfect so I'm not sure whether they sit there and tink 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 till the marks are gone or if they have some other method to do that so what we're doing is a, uh, a deep frying pan uh, out of uh, steel so that uh, we can mix some eggs up without them splattering that's the plan maybe even hey, if it works out and it doesn't take too long maybe I'll go it is Christmas but I think burn dairy is open um, I might go get some eggs and some milk and maybe some bacon and uh, make something up. We'll see. No promises on the, the cooking side, but I'm sure you guys will like it. So let me get this thing cut up. All right, so I'm using my circle jig um, that I made in, in another video, probably back in the frying pan days. It's got a magnet, a straw magnet that holds the center, and then I just use the end of a, uh, a box wrench, actually, that fits the head of my torch. And I set that in. I got a little standoff here to keep me where I need to be. And I just put it on like that, and it cuts me a perfect-ish circle. At least that's the plan anyway. So let's see what we can do today. I don't know if you 
see how clean. The last time I used this, of course, this is clean steel. So I guess I need to do a little more clean, maybe with the grinder, to get a little a little better cut. But it's all right. She's round anyway. All right, I got my trusty little <laughs> bowl stuff. Obviously, it's been outside, so we'll have to warm her up a little bit. Kind of model that to that little animal stand I made. Hopefully, that stay where I want it to stay and we can give her a go. Got the fire going, and we're almost ready to start. All right, normally I use my wooden hammer. But uh, you can see this one kind of STB and I haven't replaced it and I don't have a rounded camera, I don't think. Hopefully I don't have to make one. I think I'm using this dog leg. Side. We're not changing the outside, so I hope that doesn't turn out to be totally true. That'll be a pretty damn big pan, bigger than I want. I'm hoping that those edges will curl. But I really don't want to use the shrinking technique to, to narrow that up. We're going to find out. By the way, I'm using eighth inch uh, 1008 steel. That'd uh, be 11 gauge, I think. Once you get to the end, if that's deep enough, but I think I gotta be maybe double that. But we'll keep going. Work the edge now. Right, so, what I'm doing now is I'm on this outer edge. I don't want to work out all the way to the end. Pan. All right, at this pan, at this point, at this pan, huh? 
this point I have most of it worked out to about, you know, within three quarters of an inch, an inch of the, of the edge. And I, I want this rolled. I don't want it rolled over, but rolled up. So if I keep going, I'm just going to end up with this flat where stuff will get uh, splashed out. So I need to go around now and shrink, I'd say, two, two and a half inch sections all the way around, just using that other technique before I try dropping it out anymore. And hopefully that'll bring these edges up and in uh, and get that roll that I'm looking for. So I didn't want to do that, but I think physically that's the only way to make it possible. All right, so what I'm gonna end up doing is on the anvil, I'm gonna put a bit of a, not a fold, but something like a fold a scalp. There's like a raised edge there, and then over on this little jig, when that edge is hot, I'll hammer it down, and that should shrink it. All right, so I gotta keep doing that over and over again while it's pretty damn hot. And that'll get me some. Uh, that'll because the steel is pushed up when it's hot. When I hammer, because the rest is cold, instead of flatten it back out, it should compress, upset, making it shorter. And then you do it to the next spot and compress it. And by shrinking those pieces all the way around, you end up shrinking the diameter. I'll be back in a little while to see how to show you how it works. Now, I'll show you the technique I've adopted. It's going really, really slow. It's a big pan. But it kind of simulates what my jig did that I ended up doing on a science So I put a big old roll in like that. It's a nasty, nasty job. It sucks. That's why I made my jig, because I, well, they're smaller freaking pans to begin with. I put the whole pan in hot, that and that uh, the rim, uh, rim of fire machine or thing I made. That way you put all the scallops in all the way around and then come back one at a time and take them out. This is just, this is just a lot of freaking work. It's kicking my ass. Big pan. All right, I don't know how many times we're around and about, I would say at least an hour, maybe more, of hammering. I, I hope I have the, the height that I need. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in and stretch out just this inner ring. This pan's way too big. I wish it had gone smaller because uh, it's not going to suit the needs of what I'm trying to do. But I'm hoping that if I stretch this uh, inner ring out, uh, that'll give... Uh, the pan, actually the pan will get bigger and uh, it'll give more curl to those edges I hope yeah, it's long, I'm just learning but I wish this was about that big right now just, just an inch in diameter smaller but I, I, at this point I'm sick and tired of trying to upset it and bring it in so I'm going to just see what happens by uh, stretching just this inner ring out now thinking this over while I'm waiting for my heat to come back up. I was really stupid because you know that when you do the bowl technique for a pan you end up with the same diameter as you started with. So if I wanted a 12, uh, 12 inch pan, I should have cut a 12 inch circle, just did the bowl and not messed around with what I just did. It's sad and silly but I guess sometimes people are stuck. So I'm just going to stretch it just where I want my rim to be. So again, I'm trying to let the heat creep up about halfway up the rim. That's where I'm trying to upset. 
Finally getting down to the last couple of heats, I hope. There certainly is a lot of work to make. Edges. Can't really see much. Nice curved edges and uh, decent symmetry. Not horrible. It's hotter than hell. It's a big ass piece of meat and steel to handle. To play. It's a heavy pan to take two boys and a or two men and a boy to handle it. We got to flatten the bottom down. I mean, I just, I just want it half this size. I got to find somebody who has a stove this big now to use it. But anyway, get this thing, uh, the center heated as much as I can and start bringing that down. I'll probably bring it up and then bring it down on the anvil so that I can get some clean hits in there. Uh, it's not going to be the prettiest pan in the world, but it is what it is. But now we, sh we stretch the bottom, right? Which kind of started rolling things up. Shrunk the outside, stretch this inner ring to help exaggerate the outside. Now we're going to um, shrink, uh, compress the inside because it is curved. Alright, not much at all, but we're going to try to do our best to flatten it and try to keep this rim as close as possible. I know I'm going to have to cut it or grind it off. That's the last step here. And again, um, I'll have to do it again all the way through. If I had started with a 14 inch disc or a 12 inch disc and just did the whole bowl technique, turn around and flatten it, um, I think we would have been in good shape. I just didn't know if I could get that curve out of it, so that's why I went bigger. I added extra dimensions for this rim, but in reality, I think it all would have worked fine using a, the simpler technique. Alright, let me get the center heated. Alright, so again, my logic here with this is to get that center heated and draw it down higher. And I want the bottom to be, and that way when I get everything down, I can work it on the angle to get into that level that I want. But I need to all the way around, and with you know such small heats on the angle, it's going to take a while. To get but I'll be back once I have it all brought down. Uh, beyond what I want, and we'll see what we, what we get from there. Alright, now that I got the general body concave on the bottom, right, higher than we want it to be, I'm going to go around again and very carefully try to bring up just the, where I want the edge of the pan to be so that I have a nice, you know, hopefully clean ring so when I bring it down flat there'll be a nice edge there and it won't be lower or higher. I, I kind of want a nice clean ring. So one more time around, same technique. I'm just going to be a little more careful and just keep my height where I want it to be. Just in this section right here. Just to clean up that, what I hope the ring is going to be. I want to get as much of the circle as I can. But edged ring. It doesn't look that great right now, but a little bit at a time. It'd be so much easier with a torch. You can just heat right where you want it. Hammer. Get that heat exactly where you want it to be. Um, well, I don't want to do that. So we'll keep working. If I can get a quarter of the pan, it's 
of that ring hot, I think it would be a lot. I'd end up with better results, but it's not going that way. It doesn't seem like I can get more than a few inches. It's hard on a fire when you're covering so much of it up with a piece of steel. Now go ahead and bring that edge down flat, bring the center down flat, little by little all the way around until we hopefully have a flat sitting, not warped frying pan. I hope. I might have to let my fire have a minute to regroup here, but the idea is now. Everything's going to be getting heated at the same time. Assuming I can find somebody who has a stove this big. You dumbass. Be a good, good $20 camp stove, huh? Camp pot. Damn. Well, what we could call a proper fire going. I get a little more heat, that's for sure. Right there. So I got it tuned, I think as close as I can. She's still a little hollow in the center. Um, all that's gonna affect the heat, but I'm gonna go ahead and try to heat as much of this pan as I can. I'll go over to the table with the flatter and see if I can get the rest of that stuff down where it needs to be. The problem with this, you, know, you can't get in here with the hammer. Um, and if you do, you're gonna end up browning it a little bit. I'm hoping the flatter won't have that effect. If everything's hot, so let's see what we can do about heating the whole pan. All right, this is going to be loud, but let's hope we can do something with it. To get her flat. Perfect 
either. That's the, I think you, I would call it two meter pan. That's the hardest freaking thing is getting that sucker so it's down where you want it to be. You know, because you put it up here and down here. God, I don't know the right way to do that. Easily. Kind of, I put twice as much work into this property as I wanted to. So I'm not sure the right way to do that. It sucks. But it is what it is. I'll come back when I have a solution figured out. Someone will pop. If you could have only heard the last scene, which I am not going to include, tried something and didn't work. So I'm trying the same idea but a little more intelligent. So I got two high pots on this pan, right? So what I'm just trying to do is get those kitty corners on this and clamp them down. signature two round uh, half inch round with a loop on the end kind of thingy 
Um, and I'll be back sometime. God almighty. It's a lot of work. All it needs is a hydraulic press. Two dies while it's hot. Way to heat the whole pan. Done. Start with the right size. Do the ball. And just bring the bottom up. I could have been done hours ago. I have to do it again now. Ugh. Alright, so in case you haven't seen my handle videos. Shit, I'm still not even screwing. I'm gonna go over the top. Usually take a piece of half inch round or three eighths or whatever the case might be. Another piece of half inch. Oh shit. Some days are just should have stayed home kind of piece. Usually I use three eighths, that's probably why I'm having a little more trouble than normal. So you want to hammer both sides to get that eye kind of so it looks centered. Alright. tip on it like that all right I think that's enough of the tip just a bit of one all right and uh, I lost my center mark so I'll cut this off I'll come back I flatten the ends I'll show you in a second then what I do is I go ahead and I just flatten the ends how I want the handle on the pan. Alright, and this one I want a little bit lower, so I'm gonna hang it a little bit more. A lot of you guys uh, yell at me for doing it this way instead of uh, I, weld, I weld them on. A lot of times I'll, I'll at that point put them at an angle for a little wider surface, but I don't think I'll do that. Because they are actually curved, right? The edge of that pan is curved a little bit. So we'll put a little bit of a curve in there so that when I weld them, we'll have something good to weld to. And that'll make a nice, dangerous. Yeah, it's still a little higher than I want. Let me heat them again cool them down. That's the idea. Now, depending how wonk the, the forging process that makes the pan, sometimes I have to go around and cut that top edge. So I think I can do this one with a grinder. I did a pretty good job. All right, well, we ended up with a disappointing build, and that happens. It shouldn't happen after doing a few of them, but I haven't done a pan in a long time. Uh, if, you uh, if you remember, I, the whole approach today was uh, do the bowl technique. Cut the disc, do the bowl, flatten the bowl, be done, and have a decent pan with, with some good high edges on it. And I, I just got sidetracked 100% from there. Um, we do have one hell of a big pan. <laughs> I don't know what it measures now. Oh, shit. Well, I'm not done with the video anyway. Um, so it's, and it's, it's, it's rough. It's not what I wanted. It just took too much time. It was too big. Like I said, it takes a man and a boy to to, uh, to freaking use it. But it is a decent pan. So I would imagine for a reenactor or somebody that that does trunk camping or something. So anyway, um, since the since the build sucks so bad, um, and I did weld my handle, I'm like, oh, I always do. I know you guys don't like it. It looks ugly, but it will last. Um, what I'll do is I'm gonna go home. I'm tired. I'll come back tomorrow, we'll season this over the forge, and uh, we'll do a little breakfast or something. So at least you have a, I'll, I'll shorten the, the build video because there's nothing special about this pan. It's a piece of, it's, it's, it's a good, it's probably a goddamn good cooking pan. But uh, there's nothing special about this build outside any of the other builds except for it's larger and it fought the living daylights out of me. So um, at least we'll do some cooking. So I'll see you in the morning. I think. I don't know what I have going on tomorrow. I, don't, I think I'll see you in the morning. And we'll get this seasoned up and we'll do some type of something with it. It was supposed to be for scrambled eggs. <laughs> <Can> you... <laughs> I 
might have to buy 12 dozen eggs just to give it at all a test to see if I fill it. Gosh, I'm sorry for the build, but I'll see you tomorrow. All right, happy morning to you. What's left of me? Not much left. Late start today. Uh, we're going to season the pan. I'm going to do the gas pan. And uh, I won't take you long for much of that. What I do, I'm going to do what I normally do. Uh, I like to season in olive oil. Nobody seems to have a problem with olive oil. Just wipe her down, get a good coating inside, outside, up the handle, down the handle, in the cracks. Nice. I usually go heavier than I should, but oh, that's heavy all over the table. Nice heavy coating, and then I'm going to set that on the forge. I don't know if you can see behind me, I have uh, a deep brake drum sitting over the fire. I use that as, actually as an uh, infrared heater for the um, the shop sometimes. That, that whole brake drum gets red hot and puts out a lot of heat, a lot of infrared heat. But we'll set that over the fire, get it up to 400 or so degrees till she cooks off. Repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat for an hour and I'll be back when that part's done. We'll do some cooking. Do some kicking. All right, I got, a, I think, a decent season on this thing. It looks really good. Uh, nice and hard coating. If it's sticky, it's not done. And uh, this part's cooled down. I just did the handle. That's too hot. So as soon as that handle uh, cools down, we're going to start off a meal. And what I think I'm going to do, just because I didn't want to just do something plain. Now, remember, we got a huge freaking pan. It was supposed to be a large pan, but not that large. But plan is, uh, I'm going to do some, uh, what do you call them, like uh, home fries. Uh, start off, of course, I think every pan should start with some bacon. So I'm going to throw some bacon in, get that cut cooking down. We'll cut up this uh, potato for some home fries. And, uh, and then I'm going to do some scrambled eggs. I got eggs over there. And uh, milk here, butter. Uh, I, did, but I didn't bring salt and pepper, and I love pepper on my eggs. But I do have a little onion powder, basil, basil, as Chef Ramsay says, and some garlic salt. So hopefully we'll get enough salt from the uh, the bacon. And uh, I'm not sure about the pepper. We'll just have to deal without it. But uh, I'll be back once the handle's cool. Uh, over here on the forge on my little um, brake drum, which usually gets red hot, and I let it cool down a little bit. I put a couple of uh, stones on there so that, uh, you know, it'll, it'll be my cooking surface and that'll, that'll probably be pretty darn hot because there's a, there's a decent fire inside there. So that's going to be my cooking surface. I'll be back when I'm ready to do the mixing and making. Alright, it took a little while for that, for those uh, fire brick to heat up, understandably so. I'm going to use the pipe wrench knife today, haven't used it for anything real. We'll see how she does. Looks like she does a good job to me. Oh yeah, she's sharp. Holy shamali, she's sharp. I just want to cut the plastic, but I'm cutting where I don't want to. It's just wants to cut it. So cut her. We can cut her for sure. So I'm going to throw this bacon in. And uh, that'll help the pan a little bit. And then also give me something for those potatoes to cook. So let's get over here. So I think the pan's hot enough now. Where are you at? So you go, yeah, I think that's about right. We'll get you in there so you can catch the action. Action Jackson. I usually am not very neat with my bacon. I usually just throw this stuff in there, but we'll try it today. It's supposed to be thick slice, but it ain't very thick. Not for my not for my taste and anyway. But she'd be sizzling. We still may have pan enough for it, don't we? Okay, I'll throw it in there. Uh, cheap bacon. It all tastes good, but she ain't coming apart well. Screw it two at a time. Call it thick, thick bacon. Oh, yeah. That looks like it's going to be tasty. Take a 
forever to get it in the pan. Damn, Sam. Sorry. Down. Give us some good grease for our potatoes and our eggs. All right, not as hot as I want. Hopefully, she'll get a little hotter. Now, while that's doing its business, let's go back to the potato. See how the knife does cutting something that's a little stickier than plastic. Do 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 do. I want to be here. I should just cut and come back. But so there's a bacon wrapper. We'll set that out to the side. And then our potato. I'm just gonna let's see. I'm just gonna go. Oh yeah, that's nice. I don't like them too thick because I like them crunchy. So we'll do something like that. Skin's on, dirt's on, what the hell? Something's gotta kill you. I don't like the brown parts though, so call me picky. Of course this piece of wood I'm cutting on isn't the cleanest thing in the world either. And we'll cut them small, like I said, I like them cooked. Back. And I'm 
I'm not happy with the heat that I have on here, so I'm just going to get rid of these. Fire brick. It's hot in there. Maybe if I stand them up, they still won't be right on that. I have a pretty damn hot spot in the middle. I'll be back. Let me get this one somewhere. Those guys are cooking off pretty darn well right now. And I'd say they only have a few more minutes. Potatoes are starting to brown. I like brown potatoes. Bacon's going to be a little overdone, but that's all right. What we're going to use it for, I think. Yeah, we're getting on the home stretch here. So let's get our eggs mixed up. All right, so again, the whole point of making that pan was to have a good scrambled egg pan to have. And obviously I went overboard and made it too big, but I'm going to do some scrambled eggs. I'm going to probably put a whole dozen in just to see how they all go. So, one, two, three, I guess you guys can count. Oh, that's the first shell I got in there. This was a big piece. I should, I should cool down my pan over there. I got a little two inch wide uh, piece of uh, flat stock that I slide over the main hole of that brake drum. And that cools it down a lot. So I'm going to go do that. Try to see the last two eggs in here. That one was a tough one. There you go. Only one little shell. Let me just give this a stir and cool it down a little. Oh yeah, these guys are in good shape. See, I'm going to cool it down a lot. Yep, that's just ready to rock and roll, so we got to hurry up. So, in our eggs, let's throw a little onion salt. I always put pepper in, but... Little garlic, that's uh, onion powder actually. Little garlic powder and some basil. That should give it some good flavor. Some milk in there. Let's see, a dozen eggs, about that much milk. Mm, that much milk. And somewhere I got an old whiskey. So. I can't believe I forgot my pepper. That sucks. I'm going to let you see. I can't let you see. I can't do this left handed. Yeah, I don't mean to like that. Go with those nice and mixed. The basil cut will make it look like there's pepper on it. Maybe that'll. Those suckers are ready to go. Let's go back to the other stuff. So at this point, my potatoes are nice and brown. My bacon's overdone. Everything looks good. So we're going to take this off, put it in something for a minute. Yep, yep, yep. That looks really good. Oh, oh boy. All right, that is good looking stuff. So I only have one bowl. I wish I had another bowl. I don't think I have anything that I dare use. Let's just put some foil on this to help keep it warm. Keep it from soaking through anyway. We're gonna put these back in the eggs when we're done. So I don't it's okay if they get cooled down. I don't wanna flock you like you did. I don't wanna lose any of this grease. 
but I don't need to lose all of these. So we'll scoop it out like this. much grease in that. Ooh, almost lost a piece of bacon. That would be horrible. Um, in your eggs. And they don't cook as well. So yeah, I got more grease than I need. So let's get some, rid of some of the grease. Actually, I like butter, but we'll cook it more. Bacon fat. A couple pieces of bacon in there for flavor won't hurt. And let's see here. How much oil do we have? I don't like too much, but I want to make sure I have enough of the eggs don't stick. Alright, so this pan is going to go back onto the fire because I like a nice hot pan when I go to put the eggs in. So we'll get that sucker heated up again. I'll pull off my little dampers. Get it so she's setting level on the stones. And we'll let that crank up. I'm sure I'll have enough heat there. And then we'll dump the eggs in. I'll be right back. All right, we're definitely hot enough. So I'm going to turn down my heat a little. I'll turn it down with a big one. A little too hot, actually. So hopefully that might come back to bite me. Give my eggs one more little whisk. Those circles right in there. Keep moving as you do, especially on a hot pan. And that was the whole idea, is to be able to work those eggs without them coming over the sides. So that cooled our pan down quite a bit. Now I can turn up the heat a little. I'll take this one off. Just put this partial block in. And that should give us enough heat. And just sit here and keep working these eggs. They're cooking on the outside too, like around the rim, which is kind of interesting since my heat source is pretty central. Doesn't really matter as long as you stay ahead of them. Bacon in there, a little bit of grease, a little too much grease. The other grease floats on top, but we'll keep keep working them for a while here. Now I'm going to put my no pepper in, but yeah, wok will be handy right now to put those eggs down. If you scrape them and you see them dry on the bottom, you know they're cooking, so you got to keep working. Just keep working. Just, so then we'll just turn the heat down a little because they're always dry on the bottom. So we might have a little too much heat coming up. We'll just double that up. Looks good. Looks good. I'll be back in a few minutes. Won't take long. Alright, you guys are cooking down now to the point where I can flip them. I like my eggs, well, uh, I guess somewhere between dry and run. Not, not too dry, not run. But, but what we're going to do now that we're at this heat, I want to make sure that the right heat. Those eggs look good, they look good. So what we're going to do next. Since they're almost there, I don't want to burn them. Let me get this back in. I'll block a little more heat. We are going to do this. We are now, you're on recording, we are now going to dump all of this into that egg mixture. Make ourselves a little hashy kind of thing. Get the eggs mixed in with potatoes, mixed in with bacon. I don't know if this has a real name or not, but 
That's what we're doing today. It's the recipe I chose. I figured something different. Looks really good. Let all that stuff heat back up. Seconds. God, that looks good. Looks good. Wish I had myself some of that pepper stir. I meant to pick it up, but I didn't. Alright, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna push this stuff off to the side here. So we can blast them. Stay over there, and then I'm going to take just a drizzle of olive oil in there, just on the edge. Why that kelp don't go back in? We're just going to warm up some tortillas right here in the same pan. Since I don't have a bowl to take the eggs out of, you guys got to move away a little bit. A little bit more, don't fall out the edge though. Stay over there, stay warm. I'm not trying to cook the tortilla, just warm it up. Oh, stop. Just flipped it. I think I have enough heat coming out. I said, I'm not trying to toast it, I just want it. Just warm. So I'm going to do one more same way and I'll be back. Yeah, got that other one ready to go. Stuff. We'll just give her a little roll and tuck. Looks good. Looks good. Man, they're hot. Maybe a hot size. Slide this one over. You can even roll it over. So I don't know if, well, if I can. I only got it ripped. It'd be nice to toast them on both sides. We'll see. We'll give it a few minutes here. See if I can toast them on both sides. I don't know because of this one. Whether that got toasted at all or not. A little, you know, a little, just a little crunch. You know, is what I'm after. Got to put that right over the heat. My heat's pretty low right now. That's why I think we're going slowly. Roll that one over. That didn't get as much crunch. But you get the idea. I'll tell you one thing, this shit over here is just as good as anything right now. Mm-mm-mm. All right, let's get ready to eat. Actually, I changed my mind. I, was, I meant to put some cheese on the inside of this. So I'll just sprinkle a little bit right here on top. Hope this shall melt down a little. I don't, cheese, cheese and I don't get along too well anyway, so. Let that melt a little bit. Then we'll be ready to eat. Alright, 
Let's see what we end up with. I'm pretty damn sure I'm not going to be disappointed. And I got enough to feed an army. Let's see if I don't have an army here today. We'll take one of these guys. A little more crispy on the bottom now. If they had a second to cook. Oh wow, that's not a breakfast. But it is actually 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, gosh. The pan looks good, right? I mean, it's practically nothing stuck to it. Just needs a good washing. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. Let's go right for a good cut right there. Mm -hmm. Bacon, eggs, potatoes, cheese, mother. Let's try again. Day after Christmas brunch. Mmm, my government. Mmm, my good. Holy crap. Wow, that was a waste to put on the floor, I'll tell you. My goodness. Not too greasy. The potatoes inside the I don't know what you call it, breakfast burrito, breakfast taco, breakfast wrap. It's called a breakfast wrap. They're perfectly done. I love that. I hate crunchy potatoes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There you go. That was freaking good. Eggs are perfect. Pan worked awesomely. Did the whole thing in one pan, all at the same time almost. So if you got a big ass stove or a campfire, gosh, even without the pepper, garlic, a little bit of onion powder. Just barely tastes that basil. Let you see the basil, but just but it's there. Mmm, I mean soft, tender. Just enough cheese. Actually, I'm glad I put it on top. I wouldn't mind inside. Stay there now. Need to make a bigger fork. All right, guys, you've seen enough of me. I just can't seem to stop. Damn, 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 that's good. Don't get out There you have it. Big ass frying pan. Did its job. Like no stick. Just mm, literally no stick. Awesome. And there's breakfast. And there's the money shot. Love it. Alright, I know it was a long journey. I know it wasn't exactly what I was after, that's for sure. No doubt about it. But we made a decent pan. Somebody could use it, you know, on a camping or something like that. Unfortunately, we spent like six or seven hours making it. Which there's no way to get that money back. Um, or to get my money out of it. So, um, But we'll clean her up and we'll uh, season her up again and put her out in the storeroom and maybe somebody will buy it. I don't know. I don't know what I'd sell for. I sell my, my little ones for $150. We'll see. Hey, thanks for coming along. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm sure I'll make a short version of this or I'll shorten this up a lot because the, the work in the pan was. Something you've seen before. But uh, that's another, hey, we haven't done a cooking one and well, we did those oysters the other, the other month. But I hope, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for your support, really, on Patreon and PayPal. Go back to my home channel. There's a link for either one of them. Um, like, I, like I said, um, part of the reason that, that I'm not doing as many videos is because I have to, to pay the other bills. But that money that comes in certainly helps. It, and it helps me have, like today, a free day to well, yesterday was a holiday, right? But a free day to, well, not full day, but half day to uh, to make a video for you. Now I just have to go back and edit. I got like 
what he wants to do. Crazy, crazy. Thank you very much. I hope you guys enjoyed your December 25th and 6th, whatever you did. Ciao. Going back to eating. It's good. If you found this video uh, helpful, educational, maybe even if you just found it entertaining uh, and you want to support me, you can jump back to my channel. There's a button on the right hand side of the screen called support and it's kind of like a tip jar. You can go ahead and leave channel a tip for this video and that'll help me make some more, I guarantee. Thanks for your support as always.